Plim. The question is, in your lecture, you mentioned the scientific facts from the Quran which have been established. Can you mention a few Quranic verses which science has not confirmed? This that was the question that I mentioned in my talk, the scientific facts which science has already established, which mentioned the Holy Quran. Can I mention some few points in the Quran which science has not established? For example, the Quran says in Surah Shura, chapter 42, verse number 29, it says, it is Allah who has created the heaven and the earth and put creatures, living creatures throughout them. Quran says there is life beside this earth. Allah has put living creatures throughout the heaven and the earth. There is no scientific evidence, established scientific evidence that there is life beside this earth. Recently, they have been sending rockets and spaceships to different planets, different satellites, etc. And now just a couple of months earlier, we read in the newspapers that they got certain material from Mars, which gives proof that life can be there in Mars. And in I think day for yesterday's paper in the Times of India that they have found water in the moon. Maybe a comet crashed and there's a big crater and the water has been frozen to ice. So in future it will be easier to do investigation. We do not have to take water from planet Earth to moon. Water is already present there. We can use that water and it will save us a lot of trouble. Science is saying there are high possibilities of life being there besides Earth. But since Quran says, I believe in it. Maybe after one or two years, they may discover there's life beside this earth, or maybe after 50 years. Today, scientists, they have given various views. How will our earth end? Some scientists have given a description that the mountains will fall down. Some scientists say the mountains and rocks will become smooth when the earth is destroyed. Some people say the ocean will swell up. Some people say the universe will go in a black hole. Several. Quran too gives a description about the day of judgment. How will our creation end? Many of them match with the theories of science. Theories, not established facts. For example, the Quran says in Surah Al-Haqaf, chapter 46, verse number 3, it is Allah who has created the heavens and the earth for a limited period of time giving you indication that this creation will be destroyed and gives various signs in the Quran. For example, if you read Surah Qiyamah, chapter 75, verse number 8 and 9, it says that the moon will be buried in darkness. The sun and the moon will join together before our world ends. If you read Surah Taqweer, chapter 81, verse number 1, 2, 3 and verse number 6, it says that the sun will be folded up, the stars will fall down. The ocean will swell up. The mountain will fall down in utter ruin. Quran says in Surah Infitar, chapter 82, verse number 1, 2, and 3, it says the sky will be cleft asunder. The star will be scattered. The mountain will fall down. Various signs, how will the earth end is given. These are scientific points mentioned in the Quran, which science hasn't established yet. For example, the Holy Quran, also says in Surah Ambiya, chapter 21, verse number 104, that as we created this creation, we will roll up the heavens like a scroll is rolled up. And as we created the early creation, we shall create a new creation. So Quran says there is one more new creation that is going to be created after the world is destroyed. Science doesn't know about that. Quran says the first man on the earth was Adam alayhi salam. Science hasn't discovered that yet. Quran speaks about soul. Science hasn't established that human beings have got soul. The Holy Quran also speaks about jinns, about spirits, about angels. Science hasn't been able to discover that. Quran speaks about life after death. Science hasn't discovered that. Quran speaks about heaven and hell. Science hasn't discovered about that. But you may ask me the question, Mr. Zakir, you have given such a good lecture speaking about scientific facts, and you believe in jinns? You believe in angels? You believe in soul? You believe in life after death? Aren't you illogical? I will say no. I'm not illogical. I have got a logic why I believe. I don't blindly believe in life after death, in the soul, in heaven and hell, in jinns and spirits. I have a logical belief. 
I based my logical belief saying that suppose there are scientific facts mentioned in the Holy Quran, out of which say approximately 80% have been proved to be 100% correct. 80% of the scientific facts mentioned in the Quran have been proved by science till today to be 100% correct. The remaining 20% is ambiguous, unknown. Not even 0.001% have been proved false. Even if one verse is proved false, the Quran is not the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So um, these 20% I say goes in the ambiguous slot, unknown. So my logic says when 80% is 100% correct, the remaining 20% is ambiguous, out of which not even 0.001% have been proved wrong. All are unknown. My logic says when 80% is correct, even those 20% will be inshallah correct. It's not a blind belief, it's a logical belief.